European club volleyball has always been the pinnacle of the world game. In 1960, the Champions Cup was born, an opportunity for the best of the best from around Europe to test themselves and for one to become the champion of champions. After 40 years of Russian dominance, a new era dawned. The new millennium brought us the CEV Champions League, the world's premier club competition. For the first decade, the Italians reigned supreme, with at least one team in every final. Modena, Bergamo and Perugia all lifted the trophy, with Cannes and Tenerife ensuring some French and Spanish colour was painted into the history books. But we begin our journey today at the start of 2010. A decade into the Champions League, we would use some new stars, and there were early signs in the season we might be about to get some. In half a century of elite European club volleyball, Turkey had never produced a women's champion, but from the beginning of the campaign, it felt that momentum might be swinging to Istanbul. Echatsibasi, Fenerbahce and Vakif Bank all topped their groups, qualifying comfortably. We started hearing names like Ada, Gozde and Naz alongside those of Flia, Mamadova and Krismanovic. The major shock being back-to-back -back champions Bergamo losing four out of six matches and falling at the first hurdle in their quest for a historic three-peat. It meant there was space for a new seat at European Volleyball's top table. March 2019, 2011, the Burhan Felek Istanbul was the host venue for the Final Four, the perfect venue to usher in a new champion, as none of the four finalists had won the competition before. Fenerbahce arrived full of confidence. The hosts beaten finalists the previous year, the only team returning to the Final Four, and they'd recently been crowned Turkish champions. Standing in their way were Vakif Bank, a rising star under Giovanni Giudetti, but they were yet to win a national title under him. Their young team, though, hadn't lost a game in the Champions League that season, topping the group and dispatching compatriots to Chatsibasi to reach their first Final Four. On to the final, and it was a procession. Vakif Bank had shaken off the semi-final nerves and were flawless. On the biggest stage of all, it took them less than 75 minutes to become champions. 25-13, 25-20, 25-18 was as one-sided as it sounds. It wasn't that Rabita were poor, but Vakif Bank were outstanding. Glinka was MVP after a two-year break from the sport. Polyak the best blocker, Kirdar the best receiver. In fact, of the eight individual awards, six went to Vakif Bank players. Under Giudetti, they'd become European champions before they'd lifted a domestic trophy. But perhaps most importantly, there were signs that power was shifting in the women's game. The first Turkish team to become champions, the first time Turkey had won two medals, there was no Russian team in the final four, no Italian team in the final for the first time in seven years, and Azerbaijan were on the podium for the first time too. Once again, a new decade had ushered in a new era. Okay, Massimo, who is your second selection? My second is easy. It's easy because it's Kim. I think that uh, she she's one of the more, maybe the more decisive player, one of the more decisive player for one team. I saw her doing some, some things unbelievable in one match to, to decide the match. Also happened against me. I remember in the quarter or final of London, when, uh, okay, all Korea played really well, but as, as usual, she was decisive in the important moment. I think that she was, she's, she's a leader. She's a leader, she's a great player, a great service, a great receiver, good block and unbelievable in attack. So 
I think that in my experience in the last uh, 10, 20, 20, 20 years, 10 years for him, is uh, one, for sure one of the three more decisive players that I saw playing volleyball. Unbelievable. In all the team that she played, she was, uh, she was decisive in club, in national team. So, for sure, for me, Kim is one of the best not European players that played and then they are playing, that are playing uh, Champions League. At the start of 2011, Rabita Baku got some revenge on Vakif Bank, beating them in straight sets to become World Club champions. In the Champions League, two German teams had qualified for the first time, Sverina and Dresna joining the ranks and there would be no Spanish team in the group stages. Having reached back-to-back -back final four weekends but failing to lift the trophy, Fenerbahce had strengthened their attack, bringing in young Korean star outside hitter Kim Yong Kong. At 22 years of age, she already had three Korean and one Japanese national titles, an Asian game silver with the national team and had become the first Korean player to play overseas. Despite being relatively unknown in Europe, the feeling amongst those who brought her to Turkey is that she could become one of the best players in the world. They weren't wrong. Elsewhere, future Beach World Champion Canadian Sarah Paven was scoring big for Villa Cortesi. Gamova was leading a resurgent Dinamo Kazan. All three Turkish teams had a nucleus of strong local talent and everything was set up for another great Champions League season. In the pool phase, RC Khan stood out. Six wins from six in a group containing both Echatsibasi and Villa Cortesi. Milena Rasic, Lucia Bossetti and Paven all regularly topping the blocking, reception and scoring charts. Of the 20 teams in the group stage, 16 would progress to the knockout, so there were no early casualties. Into the final, and there was already a bit of history between the teams. Fenerbahce had announced themselves as major players when they beat Khan back in 2009, en route to their first Champions League final. In the gold medal match, the Yellow Angels finally had their chance to shine. Khan were overwhelmed from the first set onwards. Kim was in a class of her own, producing a match winning 23 points, with Ada Erdem often the bedrock of the team hitting 11 winners from 14 attempts in a 3-0 clean sweep. Kim was of course awarded the tournament MVP, Nas the best setter and Fenerbahce at the third attempt added the CEV Champions League crown to the national titles and World Club Championship they'd won with Zay Roberto. It was now becoming clear that the teams from Istanbul were the teams to beat. That summer, the leading players and coaches would head to London for the Olympic Games. Zé Roberto would take charge of a much fancied Brazilian team, a Turkish side packed to the rafters with young talent, buoyed by the Champions League success of Fenerbahce and Vakif Bank. World champions Russia, led by Boryshenko, Gamova and Kosheleva, Italy and Serbia had all performed well in the European Championships the year before, and there were individual stars from outside the continent who'd impressed throughout the season. Kim for South Korea, Jordan Larson and Logan Tom for the USA. But while they were away, there was one question that the clubs had to answer. The biggest question of all, how do we catch up with Istanbul? And uh, I give the vote to, to Milena. Also, I'm coaching her and, and, and we won pretty much everything in Vakibank with her and she won everything in national team too. And she's great, great, great blocker plus also great attacker. So I think Christiane Fuss was an amazing blocker, probably, probably one of the best blockers in the world in her time. But attack, she was never outstanding. She was good, but was never a great choice. Milena have, have the, the, the possibility to combine both, so I choose this, this two meter blocker, Poliak and Razic. The 2012 Olympics were largely disappointing for the European teams, but some of the names from the Champions League really shone. Zé Roberto's purple patch continued as he guided Brazil's women to the gold medal. Jordan Larson and Logan Tom were the other side of the net, picking up silver for the United States. And Kim's remarkable form continued as she was crowned the tournament's most valuable player. 
As the Champions League season got underway, there were a few changes to the hierarchy. Fenerbahce, the champions, had slipped down the pecking order in Turkey and were replaced by Galatasaray. Likewise, Italian giants Bergamo didn't make the cut and Busto Arsizio came in. Young American setter Carly Lloyd guided an attack featuring Maggie Kozuc, Marin Fromm and Christina Bauer. And Vakif Bank, after failing to capitalise on their 2011 success, were building a team around Serbian opposite Jovana Brakocevic in the hope of adding some more silverware both domestically and in Europe. In the pool phases, Vakif Bank, Rabita Baku and Ichatsevasi all went undefeated. The Aziri League was improving and it was the first time three teams from Baku had all qualified for the fourth round, having shown the quality to reach the final four and with big point scorers, Akin Rodewu, Madeline Montano and of course, Natasa Krismanovic, it was looking like their best chance yet to really challenge for the trophy. Come the final four, again in Istanbul, Busto Arzizio and Galatasaray continued the trend of teams making great progress in their first season of elite European competition. But that was as far as they'd go. Busto fighting back from two sets down only to fall to Rabita in the fifth. And Vakif Bank, after a close first set, dismantling Galatasaray 3-0 to set up a repeat of the 2011 final. The result was the same too, an emphatic 3-0 win. Kirta, Glinka and Tokshoy getting their second Champions League gold medals in Vakif Bank colours and Naz winning her second in a row after lifting the trophy with Fenerbahce the previous year. Brakocevic was named finals MVP. It was the perfect year for Vakif Bank. Their second Champions League win was the perfect 16 wins from 16. They also claimed their first Turkish national title under Gudeti, as well as the Turkish Cup and the World Club Championship. As the opposite Gamowa, and also she is a great player and she is very talented and also she had a lot of success in her career. She is very good player. The decade thus far had belonged almost exclusively to Istanbul and heavy hitters from across the continent were taking big steps to stem the flow of gold medals heading to Turkey. Rabita Baku brought in Nutsara Tomkom as setter. She just won the Asian Championships with Thailand. Dinamo Kazan had a settled starting six who were coming of age after that disappointing loss to Rabita Baku the previous season. And interestingly, there was an Italian team who'd only existed for a couple of seasons making their Champions League debut, Corneliano. For the champions, the team was largely the same, but for veteran wing spiker Carolina Costa Grande, who had joined after a title winning two seasons in China with Guangdong Evergrande. Both Corneliano and Piacenza were defeated in the playoffs. It would be the first time in the Champions League era and the first time in 30 years of elite European club volleyball that there would be no Italian team in the semi-finals. Baku's stunning Crystal Hall was the venue. Built to host the Eurovision Song Contest in 2012 and earmarked to host the European Games Volleyball Tournament in 2015, the omens were good for the hosts Rabita Baku. It was their third Final Four in four seasons and they had experience on their side. Dinamo Kazan had looked immense that season, but in the group stages, Valero Zurich had shown that there were lapses in concentration that could be taken advantage of. Unfortunately for Rabita, there were no such lapses in the semi-final. Gamova with 20 points at 62% in a 3-0 win and Dinamo Kazan had reached their first Champions League final. For Rabita Baku, another chance at glory had slipped away. They went on to win the bronze medal though, to go with their two silvers. It would be the last time we'd see them in a Champions League final four. On the other side of the draw, once again it was an all-Turkish affair. 
In previous years, Vakif Bank had overcome compatriots Fenerbahce and Galatasaray. This time, it was Echatsibasi. Despite Echatsibasi taking the first set, they were soundly beaten 3-1. And Vakif Bank had reached their second final in two years. Only RC Khan and Bergamo had gone back to back in the Champions League era and this was another chance for Giovanni Giudetti's team to make history for Turkish volleyball. But Dinamo Kazan, they had other ideas. Between 1960 and 2000, Russian teams have lifted the Champions Cup an astonishing 24 times. This was the longest trophy drought the country had ever experienced. It was Vakif Bank's third Champions League final in four years. It was Kazan's first, but their team was full of huge experience. Jordan Larson, an Olympic medalist. Gamova, Borodakova and Startseva were world champions. The big stage wasn't new to this group. In the second set, they destroyed Vakif Bank 25-11 en route to a 3-0 win. 21 points for Gamova, she was named the MVP. And after a disappointing Olympic Games, this was the perfect response. For her and for Russian volleyball, they were back. One Brazilian to another. Marco, who is your first nomination? Jordan Larson. Uh, two times Champions League champion for two different teams. She played in Kazan, she played also in Zazbashi. And she's a complete player, no? Receiver, spiker, is a dominant player. And for a long time, she lead different teams in, in the Champions League. And also, She's MVP in one edition of the Champions League, 2014-2015. My nomination go to Jordan Lars. Of the Istanbul Giants, Echatsivasi would due their moment in the sun. Four times they'd reached the final four, four times they'd lost in the semi-final, having to watch on whilst Vakif Bank and Fenerbahce claimed Champions League glory. They'd not won a Turkish title since 2012, but Vakif Bank had set the precedent of winning the Champions League without claiming domestic honours, and Giovanni Caprara had put together an all-star cast for the season. De La Cruz added Dominican flair, Jordan Larson had just lifted the trophy with Dinamo Kazan the year before, and Christiana Furst had two gold medals with two separate teams and was already used to the workings of the Turkish League. In all the years of the Champions League, perhaps one of the biggest surprises is that there hasn't been more Polish success. Given the size of the sport in Poland and the fans in Poland, not a single Polish team had reached the Final Four since the year 2000. But this year, Chemik Police topped the group, and that group included the defending champions Dinamo Kazan and the bronze medalist Rabita Baku. Kazan's title defence was short-lived a Sheila-led Vakif Bank breezed past them in the playoffs, and club volleyball's showpiece event headed to Poland for the very first time. Yet again, it was Istanbul versus Istanbul in the semi-final, this time a repeat of 2014. All eyes were on the battle of Sheila versus Larsen. Larsen and by extension Echatsibasi were victorious. In a tight game, her 25 points were the difference and Echatsibasi were in their first Champions League final. Vakif Bank had lost a semi-final for the first time in the Champions League era. In the other semi-final, there were a few firsts. As well as Chemic Police being the first Polish team to reach the final four, Busto's middle blocker Kira Michael became the first British player to reach that stage of the Champions League. Diouf and Havelkova did the damage for the visitors and the hosts graciously bowed out in the semi-finals. Vakif Bank picked up the bronze medal with a 3-0 win over Chemic Police. It was a third medal in three seasons, but none of them were that gold that they'd have wanted. The final and a new name would be etched on the trophy. It was Turkey versus Italy. They'd monopolised the Champions League over the years, but never with these two teams. 
Busto were looking to pick up where Bergamo left off in 2009. Echazzivasi looking to add to the dynasty being created in their home city. It was their chance to be the queens of Europe, the queens of Istanbul, and they duly obliged and took the crown. So often since 2010, all of the drama has been in the semi-finals and the final has ended 3-0. This year was no different. Echazzivasi seized their opportunity. Jordan Larson, the MVP, claimed consecutive Champions Leagues with different clubs in different countries. Maya Polyak claimed her fourth Champions League title, Christiana First claimed her third, and both had achieved that feat with three different clubs. Interestingly, both Maya Polyak and Vakif Bank's Milena Rasic were named as middle blockers in the team of the tournament. Both would later be named in the CEV Champions League Team of the Decade. Again, there are only great player here, but you know, Maya was the, 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 the way she, she was able to change the matches with their block, more than her attack, were something unique. Also, the way that she was caring, she was really making scare, you know, the, 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 the opponent attacker. So one block for Maya means was always meaning two, three points for us because after this block, after come two, three, two, three tip because no one has the courage to attack again against her. So and very specialized on one leg, so I pick uh, Maya first. In 2015, the Champions League had grown. From 20 teams to 24, from five pools to six. But there were some notable absentees. No Rabi Tabaku and no Busto. Instead, Pomi Castelmaggiore had burst onto the scene. They'd won their first and only Scudetto to earn their place, but they were in a tough pool that included Echazzibasi and Chemic Police. They had a remarkable team though, Francesca Piccinini had eight Champions League medals dating back to 2000, Carly Lloyd had just been the best setter and MVP at the Pan American Games and Maggie Kozuc was a points machine, back in Italy after winning Champions League bronze with Busto in 2013. Their first ever Champions League game, they beat Echat Sabasi in Istanbul and everybody knew they were the real deal. The pool was a battle, Pomi, Chemic Police and Echazibasi all winning four and losing two. Elsewhere, Vakif Bank, Volero Zurich and Fenerbahce on their return to the Champions League all went six wins from six games to progress. We fast forward to the business end and once again a team in their first season at the top level had reached the final four. But on this occasion, Pomi were joined by serious heavyweights. Vakif Bank, Dinamo Kazan and Fenerbahce. Between them, winners of four of the last five Champions Leagues. Pomi were selected as hosts and the town totally embraced it. Baby pink everywhere, from playing kits to supporters in the stands, the shop windows, even the bakers baking special pink loaves to mark the occasion. The atmosphere was fearsome, the volleyball was fearless. Pomi dismissed Dinamo Kazan and Vakif Bank without dropping a set. They became the first team in the Champions League era to win the trophy in their first season in the competition. Italy had a European champion for the first time since Bergamo in 2010. Francesca Piccinini was MVP on that day and she repeated the feat six years later. Her second Champions League MVP, her sixth Champions League gold medal, 16 years after the first. Both Carly Lloyd and Kozulch have gone on record as saying it was an experience and an atmosphere that they've never felt before and never felt since. Of that winning team, most went their separate ways, including Kozulch, Remarkably, it was her final game of volleyball before she embarked on a successful career on the beach. The Rio Olympics followed, and once again the podium was filled with Champions League favourites from the USA and Serbia, but it was the MVP that everyone was talking about. Zhu Ting of China, a 21-year-old sensation that we hadn't seen in Europe yet. Zuting. Zuting for me is also an amazing player. 
she grow a lot of last three years, four years, she's growing. Is uh, she play? We play against her in different competition and world championship. And uh, I saw her playing world championship. We play many matches in our Turkish league, but she was decisive also in Champions League finals and many competitions with uh, uh, her team in the Vakif Bank. I think Zhu Ting is, is my nomination from this top five. Vakif Bank had become a world volleyball powerhouse. But after losing two finals and a semi-final in three seasons, Giovanni Gudetti needed a magic bullet. He found it in Zhu Ting. Her rise was nothing short of sensational. 21 years of age, MVP at the Olympic Games, her performance level off the charts and her fans followed her like a rock star. She had to be in the Champions League and Vakif Bank were the team who made it happen. Alongside her, they had Olympic medalists in Milena Rasic and Kim Hill, as well as Lonika Sloches and that core that had built the success, Kirda, Urge, Nas. Despite Pommy's success the previous year, Italy only had two teams involved, Modena and Imoco, returning to the Champions League after an underwhelming debut a few seasons previously. They'd signed smart though, the likes of Kelsey Robinson and Nicole Forsett straight from the Olympic podium, but had mostly Italian talent and were ready to step up. And step up they did, finishing second in their group behind compatriots Modena. Corneliano were given the right to host the final four and Europe's top teams headed to the Palo Verde, 45 kilometers north of Venice, where once again, it would be three heavy hitters versus a plucky Italian upstart. Vakif Bank and Echat Sabasi would of course have to face each other in the semi-final, but the interesting one was Dinamo Moscow. A brief look into the history books tells us that they won the very first European Cup in 1960. They won five in a row between 68 and 72 and are the most successful team in the history of European volleyball with 11 titles. A sleeping giant if ever there was one. However, the giant remained asleep as Imoko, despite a blip in the second set, booked their place in the final with a 3-1 win. Serena Ortolani, a three-time Champions League winner, the top scorer. Nicole Fawcett and Kelsey Robinson added some star-spangled bangers and Imoko were one win away from the title. But that win never came. Vakif Bank took no prisoners. Zhu Ting scored 22 points and added the Champions League MVP to the Olympic MVP she got earlier the same season. Milena Rasic was named as the best middle blocker once more, as her good friend and longtime opponent Maya Poliak announced her retirement from competitive volleyball. After leading the Champions League in kill blocks in 2017, 2015, 2014 and 2011, being named as Champions League best middle blocker five times and winning the Champions League four times with Vakif Bank, Echatsibasi and twice with Bergamo, she'd later be selected as a middle blocker in the Champions League team of the decade. It was also the first time that three Americans made the dream team. Rachel Adams as a middle, Kelsey Robinson and Kimberly Hill as the best outsides. But the undisputed star was Zhu Ting, a rare phenomenon. I take my right to vote for Boskovic. I think not for no reason she she got all this individual premise and this is the one of the few examples where I mean most often when when it's about individual awards I I don't like it I will be honest because volleyball it's so team sport and there is so much connection between these positions in a in a team that I I barely agreed with this that only one person can can bring your results through the whole season or or through the one big tournament you, you know you need all of them but somehow for me Boskovic knowing her personally from the Serbia it's it's one player which is complete 
Volleyball, perhaps more so than any other professional sport, is a transient, fast-moving, constantly evolving sport, the landscape always changing. Perhaps the most stark example of that, Pommy in 2016. The Queens of Europe, a whole town behind them, then gone without a trace. Nothing more than a special memory for those involved. Which is why this season was so special for Vakif Bank. Club captain Gosde Kirdar had announced that she'd retire at the end of the season, as would Neslihan Demir Gule. Aside from Giovanni Cudetti, they were the only ever presence in Vakif Bank's rise to European volleyball giants. Their objective was simple, win everything. They'd strengthened their ranks, bringing in Kelsey Robinson from Imoco, but likewise, Imoco had levelled up too. Sami Brizio came in after an award-winning time at USC. Polish setter Asha Velos came in ready to pull the strings. Croatian Samantha Fabris, Robin de Cruyff, and a young coach, Daniela Santarelli, took the reins after a number of years as the assistant. Combined with a raucous atmosphere at the Palo Verde, Imoco were ready to challenge. Every year, there's one team who sneaks under the radar. They may grab a sneaky win against a big name, or may qualify from their group unexpectedly, but this year, they went one further. CSM Alba Blach of Romania topped their group, beating Valero Zurich in the process. They'd host the final four, eventually settling on moving the tournament to the capital city of Bucharest. They made history as the first Romanian team to reach that stage of the tournament and continued to be history makers, beating Galatasaray to reach the final. People may not have heard of the team, but they'd certainly have heard of some of the players. Natasa Krismanovic, Tiana Malesevic and Cuban opposite Anna Klega was unplayable. 27 points, it didn't take long for her to catch the eye of Vakit Bank. Imoko vs Vakif Bank had the air of a final, and Epic just doesn't do it justice. Vakif Bank, two sets up, and then Imoko completely changed the game, taking the third and fourth set to 17 and 15 respectively. Zhu Ting was once again the dominant scorer, but it was Gozde Kirda who eventually hit the winning point after it was reviewed, and Vakif Bank had got through the biggest challenge. Heartbreak for Imoko after being match point up in the fifth, they'd have to settle for the bronze medal. As for Vakif Bank, it was as emphatic a final win as there has ever been in the Champions League. It was mission complete. The first Turkish team to win back-to-back -back Champions League titles, they'd won the domestic treble, the Champions League and the World Club Championship in the same season. Gozde Kirda was aptly awarded the MVP. She picked up an injury in the final, but refused to leave the court when the coaches asked if she wanted to be replaced, and there was a long-lasting memory. She was hopping around on one leg, but she stayed for so long after the court was cleared to dance with her friends, to dance with the family, and celebrate that career. Mission accomplished. We're, We're going, going to, to the, the super final. See you there. <laughs> it's always a really proud moment to play in a final, but to play in the very first super final, it should be an incredible atmosphere. I'm very proud to play the super final with uh, this team. It's a great group of girls. We work very hard for it, and um, I'm hoping for a really good finish for a good ending. I can say that we go from a zero to hero, and no one expects that we're gonna qualify. In 2018, the CEV changed the game again. Instead of the traditional final four for men and women, there would be one super finals. Berlin would be the host city, the Max Schmelinghalle, the iconic venue. The format, less complicated. 20 teams, five pools, the winner of each pool plus the three best runners up would progress to the quarterfinals, then it was knockout volleyball. The Bolters this year were Allianz MTV Stuttgart, Qualifying for the quarterfinals for the first time, they became the first German team to achieve that, eventually falling to Navarra. The new format suited the biggest teams, two Turkish and two Italian in the semi-finals. 
Turkey had had a team in the final every year since the turn of the decade, winning six Champions League titles between those three Istanbul powerhouses, but it felt like the Italians were on an upward curve. Of course there was Pommy, that hazy pink memory, less a false dawn, more a ray of sunshine through the door that Corneliano were trying to force open. They did force it open and Navarra came straight through it as well. Fenerbahce and Vakif Bank both humbled in the semi-finals and we were left with the first all-Italian final since Bergamo versus Novara in 2005. In fact, Novara's first final since 2005 and Piccinini's ninth. This would be Francesca Piccinini's ninth time in either a Champions League final or a final four. Despite an almost comeback in the third set, once again, Corneliano came up short. Piccinini claimed a record seventh Champions League gold medal, but the day belonged to Paolo Rigoni, a 27 point MVP in the final. That performance was a parting gift as she'd already agreed to join the Panteri the following season. dare qualsiasi tipo di pala ugualmente bene si muove molto bene si sposta molto veloce uh, difende molto bene e muove uh, abbastanza bene quindi mi piace molto and now the Champions League hangs there like a cloud of ifs and buts the CEV left with no choice but to abandon the competition just as we were reaching the business end Play wasn't safe, but even if it were, it wouldn't have been a fair contest. The international players that make the tournament the spectacle that it is had returned to the home nations. So at the end of this decade, what have we learned? This season, it's like everything and nothing have changed. Vakif Bank and Imoko have progressed to the semi-finals with ease, but instead of Fabrice and Zhu Ting grabbing the headlines, Bella Hack and Palarigono have stolen the show the next generation of talent, but still the settled status. A lovely blend of the unexpected and the familiar. It feels like only a matter of time until Imoko lift the trophy, but if history has shown us anything, it's that dynasties don't last. Dinamo Moscow, Bergamo, look like their reigns could last forever, which is why Vakif Bank and Gudetti will be so desperate to hold on to the success while they can, and Imoko and Santarelli will be desperate to etch their name into the trophy while they still have the belief. Could one more near miss be the end a la Rabita? Given the strength of the Italian league, probably not, but we'll always have a point. In the 20 years of the tournament, icons and legacies have been created. Piccinini, seven titles. Her career has lasted longer than the Champions League has existed and she'll be continuing with Busto when we're back up and running. Kim, then Zhu Ting have arrived from Asia and become the biggest stars in the world. In a sport where loyalty isn't always rewarded, we've seen the likes of Gozde Kirda and Nas at Vakif Bank. Monica Di Gennaro at Corneliano, Natalia Goncharova at Dinamo Moscow, they've become legends and they've been rewarded with success. We've seen the torch being passed, Brakocevic, Dobosevic, Djuf to Igonu. Players from countries who may never get to reach the heights for their national team have had a huge impact. Bella Hack, Samantha Fabrice, Sami Brizio, and Britt Herbots is about to burst through too. But for now, we wait the next season, for the next match, for the next champion, for the unfinished business.